Welcome back, my fellow makers. This year at Enemy Los Angeles, I was doing a giveaway. I made a Voltron helmet and a Mega Man helmet, and people really dug the Mega Man helmet. And people are asking me, are you going to make these patterns available in my shop? And the answer is yes. So that's what we're going to be building today, right here on Evil Ted Live. So in the Mega Man, we're going to start with the base of the helmet. This is our top piece, and these are the sides. We have the left and the right already cut out. This is the trim detail. Uh, we're going to go, in, go into details on that later. And, of course, here are the ear pieces. Now, everything has been cut out at 90-degree angles, but sometimes it gets a little uneven, so I'm going to take the rotary tool and a stone bit, and we're just going to clean up these edges. All right, now we're gonna add the, uh, this is for the uh, detail again. This is, uh, I believe this looks like uh, eight mil. Um, you can use eight miller. Um, when building this helmet, you can use eight mil to 10 mil. This still still work. Uh, this is the trim on the top of the helmet and we're gonna cut this out of uh, a bevel. All the angles are uh, get beveled. Sorry, all the edges get beveled. So I'm gonna take my metal straight edge. And I find when cutting bevels, it's always best to do them. Like if you want the bevel going up, I always find it's best to do them from behind. So you find your line right here and uh, get my straight edge. I'm gonna tilt and angle, have the tip of the blade touching the table. And go a hard angle like this. Pow, see? You get that, that nice angle like that. Do the same thing on this side. Take the corner, line it up like that. Yeah, perfect. Beveled square in the front of the helmet. Like that. There we go. We got the front detail and the uh, top detail. Beveled and cut. Okay, I have a three and a half inch acrylic dome and I got some uh, foam I cut at the same diameter. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna heat this up using my heat board. All right, now the foam is nice and hot. I'm pushing inside the acrylic dome like this. Make it sure it's nice and flush inside the dome. Now we're gonna let this cool. All right, now it's cool. Take it out. Ta-da, look at that, that dome. And this is gonna go inside our, our ear. This is the base of the ear, interior of the ear. So we're gonna end up making two of these. Okay, our next step is going to heat curl the foam pieces before we assemble them. Nice curl like so. You can just, here, check this out. So I just took it off camera and pushed it on my knee a little bit. Just want to get that slight curl. All right, our pieces have been heat curled. Now we're going to start with gluing them together. We're going to start with the darts on the helmet. We're going to start with these guys first. Now, when applying glue to your darts, you apply the contact cement. Now, I kind of go a little generously on this right here. No, just up there on the top like that. And then take a piece of scrap foam and just go all the way down in the nooks and crannies like that because the brush won't reach it without getting glue everywhere. So you just want to make it nice and clean. Take that scrap foam with a tapered bit to it and work it right down in there. Then we'll let these guys dry. All right, now it's dry. Line up those edges. And again, make sure you touch the top edge first. This really does help minimize your uh, your seams. Just like that. Nice and flush. Push for contact. Let's see? All right, got our two sides glued together. Do the same thing with the uh, top of them. We get to glue these darts first. Let's start with the front right here. Now that's together, we're gonna go and glue on the sides. So we're gonna start with the, um, yeah, let's do the right side first. The top edge first. Line it up, get that restriction mark. Just like that, perfect. Right. 
Now I'm going to apply contact cement to the left side. All right, the helmet is all glued together. We're going to go ahead and set this aside, let this dry a little bit longer. Now we're going to move on to our ear pieces. Let's go ahead and glue these guys together. Contact cement right here, there. Okay, contact cement is dry. You line them up, nice and flush. There you go. All right, now these guys are glued together. This is where the dome's gonna be sitting right back here behind the ears, like that. See, it's like a ballpoint pen. All right, now, what we're gonna do is a technique I like to use. It's called using the wet, uh, using contact cement, but applying the two pieces together while the cement is still wet. What that does, it gives you a little bit of working time. So we're gonna go ahead and apply to our piece. Of course, we have our ballpoint pin mark, so we know where the glue is going to go. And the contact cement on the inside. Now, we apply this while it's still wet. And you get your ballpoint pin mark, and you kind of line it up and push it in place. So we're gonna do it now. You do the same thing on this one. All right, now the glue is dry. You kind of come back in here and just push it in place. See, and it sticks. Fantastic. So there's our ears. Of course, you can see a lot better close up here. <laughs> All right, these guys are done. Let's set them aside. Now the helmet, uh, the glue's sat long enough. We're gonna take a heat gun and we're just gonna reheat the foam and heat up and make it a little bit rounder. So we're gonna do that by getting the heat board. See right now what I do is these guys, I wanna curl them in a little bit more, just like that, see? And I can shape them up and this can come down a little bit more too, so. All right, the helmet is shaping up nicely. This is looking great. This is our detail piece. This is going to be the um, the trim that goes right down the center of the helmet. This guy sits right here in front like that. And you can see that registration mark in the front. I think that'd be a perfect spot for this guy right here to sit. Let's use a bolt. Let's make our marks here. We're going to place this guy right here like that. And yeah, about, say about, play about right there, about an inch. Okay, we're going to apply some contact cement. All right, let's start with the front right here. Line it up. Good contact. Right down the center. Yeah, what I'm doing is I always keep line up the seams directly in the back here like that. Perfect, making sure it's centered. That, good. And then we come back and just push down the edges like that. All right, helmet's looking great. Our next step will be placing our ears on. Now again, it's got a little bit of a hard edge here. I kind of, I like, I like the lip on this a lot. So we're just gonna apply contact cement just on the edge. Now where the seam is, you can either put it in the bottom or put it in the back. I think I'm gonna put mine at the bottom right down here. Just, just so we know where to apply the contact cement. Okay, now we got this all lined up. Let's go ahead and apply contact cement. Again, we're gonna just do one ear at a time. Now we're gonna apply contact cement just on the edge right there. Again, we're gonna go ahead and apply this while the glue is still wet. Line it up just like that. Wow, I really like this lip. I really do. All right, it's stuck. Fantastic. I'm gonna do the other side. Same drill. Up to the bottom. Good to be four. <laughs> Look at that, it's coming together. All right, this is looking great. Uh, our next step is we're gonna go through and check these seams. Now, there's some high points and low points, a little bit of some lips here. I'm gonna take a stone bit, and I like to use the uh, this bit right here with the tapered ends, because therefore you don't have don't leave any grooves. Sometimes with the, some stone bits have a square edge to them, and they leave a groove. So when you have a tapered bit like this, I find it's a lot easier to clean up.
All right, now we uh, took the took down all the high edges. I'm going to go in now and start patching the seams with the gap filler. Again, if you guys do not use this stuff, it's awesome. I have links for this below the video. The cool thing about gap filler is that uh, it's non-toxic. When it dries, it remains flexible and you can sand it when it dries. So I'm going to go ahead and lay this on like so. And to minimize the sanding, I take a, a cup of water and just wet my finger and smooth it out a little bit. And that helps kind of smooth it all out. Now I find when working with gap filler, I like to do one section at a time. Like you just hit it and go all the way down. All right, there it is. It's set for an entire day, nice and dry. So I get some sanding sponge. This and just a little extra pass. Once it's all sanded, you can kind of run your fingers over it and kind of feel it. You see any spots, any unevenness, making sure it's all good. Everything has been sanded. This looks great, nice and smooth. Our next step, we'll be taking this to the spray booth and we'll be applying plastic dip. This is the blue. Now again, plastic dip, um, not my particular favorite, but for this particular project, we're gonna do this as the base color of the helmet. Uh, we're gonna do multiple coats. And I find working with plastic dip, the best thing to do is put this in a, a bucket of hot tap water for at least 10 minutes. And I like to do that before I spray. It makes it a little smooth, um, loosens everything up and it comes out like spray paint. There it is, the helmet is dry. This is about four layers of plastic dip. Uh, looks great. What we're gonna do today now, we're going to mask off the air. He's gonna paint these guys uh, light blue. Um, I'm realizing something though, as I'm touching it, there's a little bit of these like little nibs, like little bump, like I don't know what caused them, like little dust bulb, little high rises on them. What are you saying? I'm gonna see if I can't just like very gently just rub them off a little bit. Just take them off if we can. Yeah, there you go. All right, again, I know what you're thinking, oh no, no, we have some sand spots, but this is solid blue with a little bit of sanding on it. You're just scoring it, but it will, that will go away once you put a clear coat on it, so I wouldn't worry so much about that. What we're gonna do now, we're going to mask these guys off, but I wanna get this curve. So, I found a piece of uh, duct tape at the shop today here, and I think that's close, kind of close to the circumference I need for the, uh, the masking tape. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna take some frog tape, and we got this guy we're going to lay him on the tape like this all right now with our craft knife we're going to go ahead and cut these guys out all right so we're going to go ahead like this like that So the plan is we're going to take this guy like so curve into him trying to try to make it just kind of fall in place ah there it is let's try not to do it in a one big section let's try to do it in a smaller i think it might work a lot easier if we try to do it in smaller sections at a time like this guy right here okay not bad we've got one <laughs> we've got one ear covered let's go ahead and do the other side all right we got both the uh ear parts uh, covered. Let's go ahead and focus on these strips here. And I find it's always best to use this with thinner tape, but I want big long links. So I'm gonna take the tape I already have, the frog tape, and make some thin strips. So we're just gonna lay this down like so, and cut some thin strips. So then you take the thin strip like so. And I just find it's a lot easier when masking this helmet. So I'll go like this. Yeah, see, when you have thinner strips, it's just a lot easier to get these edges. Yeah, okay, I'm just double checking the edges here, looking good, looking good. All right, uh, everything has been masked off. What I do is I like to mask off the edges first. So we make sure these are all dialed in, these look good. Double check them, make sure they look nice and flush and clean. So now that we got that, we're gonna go ahead and take this um, frog tape and just proceed to cover the rest of it. 
All right, everything has been properly masked off. We're gonna go ahead and start painting. We got my, uh, I have my Platiflex, this is the blue. Which color blue is this? This is nitro blue and some white. We're gonna mix together. I want, I like this blue, but I want just a, I mean, it's not, it's not too far off what I want, but I want it a little lighter. So we're gonna go ahead and now fun fact guys about Platiflex paints is that you can airbrush them here, as I struggle to put a lid on here. I got some standard window cleaner. We're just gonna squirt a little bit in here and mix it together. Make sure you get that, that light blue that I want. All right, let's go ahead and uh, we're gonna load up our airbrush. Get my cap on. Hook it up to my pache and let's start painting. All right, here we go. Okay, let's dry the first coat with a hair dryer first. Get the speed up a little bit. All right, let's do our second coat. All right, I guess about three to four coats. Yeah, but first about four coats of the light blue on here. So it's all done and dry. Let's go ahead and demask it. Let's turn this light off. It seems a little hot. There it goes. Knock that down a little bit. And let's take the masking off. I know masking sometimes is always a pain, but in the long run, it's always worth it. It always pays off. Ah, coming together, this looks great. Now, next thing is ooh, these guys are red. Now I'm not gonna go ahead and mask all this and airbrush it. I'm just gonna take a brush and paint this in red. We got our Platiflex red. We need to be using a brush cover the other area later just get this edge first now the trick is with this stuff is that you don't want to tear what you've already done so you gotta let this dry this is one coat i always like to have this side completely dry first before we go on to the other side because if it's wet you might put your hand up so now it's completely dry we're gonna go ahead and do one coat on this side as well too so yep there it is i went ahead and ended up doing three thin coats uh, again, you have to let each layer dry before you apply the other coat. I find it helps keep everything really smooth. This is all done. Now we're going to proceed to take this to the spray booth and seal it. And I'm going to seal it with um, some Rust-Oleum 2X Clear. It's going to give it a nice little gloss. Let's take this to the spray booth. And there it is, the clear coat is dry. This looks amazing. Now we're gonna go ahead and put in some foam uh, padding. So I have some foam in the shop. I went ahead and cut into strips. This is for the back and this is for the top of the head. And I'm gonna have it go right about, I just wanna go right directly in the top like that. So what I'm gonna do is let me get some, uh, let me get my one, two, three box and just kind of position this guy so he doesn't roll around on me when I'm trying to uh, glue the uh, strip in like that. There you go, perfect. And of course, I got my shear bonder, hot glue gun, battery powered. We're gonna apply the glue. Excellent. Let's start with the center first. That's it. Now I'm just going to go ahead and hold this in until it cools. And then I'll just come back and peel the foam up and glue it in from behind. All right, got it. Now I'll come back in here with this guy. Mind it while glue on that. <laughs> Don't burn yourself in the process. All right, the padding's all glued in. Let's go ahead and do a test fit. <laughs> there it is, the making of the Mega Man helmet. Uh, who knew that people would love such an iconic character 
from this game. Uh, it's old, but it's a simple design and it looks cool. Um, all the Mega Man people out there, I hope you really enjoy it as much as I did making it. Everything I used on this build is listed below the video. If that subscribe button is red, that means you have not subscribed. Please, if you like my videos and want to see more, you had to hit that subscribe button. And while you're at it, you can jump over to my website, eviltedsmith.com, where I have patterns for sale. And if you shop through my Amazon links, buying cosplay supplies helps me a lot. Again, I want to take this time out to thank the community for people letting me know they wanted this pattern. It was something fun to make for the Anime Expo uh, giveaway and people liked it so much they reached out to me and said, please make it available. So I will. If there's other things out there that you guys would like me to make, please reach out to me. Leave it in comments below. Hit that thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. OK, <laughs> it means a lot to me. A little click for you is a big deal to me. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you back next time right here on Evil Ted Live. Another great way you can show your support, you can pick up some of my merchandise on my Teespring shop.